We are back. Look, I want to show this set of numbers from Quinnipiac because this was a classic pox on all of Washington job <laughs> approval ratings. The Supreme Court is the tallest little person uh, in the room here at sitting at an approval rating of 37 percent. President Biden is lording over congressional Democrats uh, with 31 percent job approval to their 30 percent job approval with Republicans in Congress, 23 percent. You know, this is the cross current, Maria Teresa, that is I think making the midterms, like, it's not a done deal yet. The midterms, I can say right now, is absolutely not going to be a blowout. In 2014, we saw the opposing party at least 30 points ahead of the Democrats at the time. And it was clear that they were going to change. Now it is a dead heat. You look at the Senate, it does look like you're going to have perhaps two senators, one from Ohio, one from Pennsylvania, on the Democratic side. Mm -hmm. And among the Democrats inside Washington, it's like, we may lose the House, but let's limit the losses. And... While it looks like you, when you poll Republican against Democrat, it looks like it's almost a dead heat evenly. The moment that you put a MAGA Republican against yeah. a Democrat, that all of a sudden stirs a completely different reaction among the population. So I think it's going to be closer than folks realize. You know, Steve, it, it, every other midterm when the out party wins, they, they fashion themselves as something new. Right. Mm. That is the missing piece here for the GOP. They're not offering anything new. No, they're hoping to trade on volatility and the unpopularity of, yeah. of Joe Biden. If you go back, though, and look at, at races since 2006, every single election since 2006, with the exception of 2012, when Barack Obama was reelected, has been a change election. That is extraordinary volatility in our politics, and I think we're likely to see more of it now. Republicans, I think, could well succeed. I do expect that it will be a pretty good day for Republicans, certainly in the House, maybe in the Senate. Because they're not Joe Biden, because people are looking at these inflation numbers, because we could be on the verge of a recession, they, their view is we don't have to put forth much of an agenda. And to the extent that we do, it'll be negative for us. By the way, speaking of recession, boy, Janet Yellen seemed to preview that GDP might be negative this week. And a lot of people are going to say that's going to meet a definition of recession. Hey, but don't call it a recession. What do you make of that spin, Yamesh? It's well, one, it's, it's really interesting because obviously the Treasury Secretary and the White House, they don't want to be leaning in too much into negative language when it comes to the economy, especially because we're in this strange place in the economy where there's all these jobs, but still Americans are seeing low wages. They want to get raises, but also people are just sort of tired of doing the sort of economy that we had pre pandemic. People want to have more flexibility. People are leaving their jobs. And then when I also looked at these numbers and we think about sort of the approval rating in Washington, I was also went back and looked at the approval rating of scientists, of journalists. Americans are sort of in a position where they don't like anyone right now, and that probably benefits the Republicans. But there's also, of course, still abortion politics and sort of the, the way that Democrats want to mobilize on that issue. But I think overall, America's in a weird place because I think we're in this, we're still traumatized by the pandemic. We're still dealing with all of the things, um, all the challenges that are coming up. And then I think you also have Americans just sort of trying to balance the, their, I think, real apathy for all of the different sectors of government and science and the media. Part of me wants to just say, and, and this is based on conversations I've had on the Hill the last couple of weeks, is don't overthink it. I mean, Republicans have the largest majority in the House of Representatives that they've had, minority, sorry, in a very long time. It doesn't take a lot for them to have right. a historically large Republican majority. Will that happen? I have no idea. But it doesn't, if they win the mean, the average of what they would win in a midterm election, in the first midterm election of a president cycle, right. they're already in one of the largest majorities in a very long time. So I think that is that is what, and, and add on negative GDP numbers, add on a stagnant economy. And I think it's just, I think we're going to have a really good night for Republicans on Capitol Hill. The issue with the Senate races, though, is something that seems to be, I mean, it, it, it's, it is the story of 2010 for the Republicans. Yeah. It was the story of it took, why it took them an extra four years to get the Senate the last It's really interesting to watch because you've had a bunch of Republican candidates, uh, Herschel Walker in Georgia, Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania, J.D. Vance in Ohio, who have, let's put it mildly, struggled a little bit, or uh, ranging from a little bit to a lot. And Mitch McConnell's super PAC, the Senate Leadership Fund, has not really gotten in and pushed their preferred candidates in a lot of races this cycle. I might get... They had threatened to. They threatened to, and they still might in Missouri if Eric Greitens nears that nomination. But it is very interesting to see them kind of take this hands-off approach while Raphael Warnock is, you know, kind of eyes on the prize and, and charging ahead against a Herschel Walker, who a video came out last week where he was imagining to be an FBI agent, and he said he was an FBI agent. Republicans are kind of just sitting there on Capitol Hill being like, 
God, what is going on? What, well, what uh, is going on? That doesn't explain weak candidates. No, but these, right. are, but these are all the three that you mentioned, J.D. Vance, yeah. Dr. Oz, and Herschel Walker. They're McConnell all, tried to stop all, all three, by exactly the way. Exactly right. But, that, but, but I mean, I think, Halfway. And yeah. that, could be, but that could be one of the reasons why Mitch McConnell isn't. He basically, maybe he wants, he's like, let's go back to normal, where we are talking about policy as a Republican and Democratic Party, and the only way to do so is by sacrificing some of these uh, senatorial seats. But well, at the same time, I think Mitch McConnell very much wants to be majority, majority leader. Yeah, agree. I think nope. do just and if, it, if it's J.D. Vance that gets in there, he'll take it. If it's yeah, Herschel Walker, irony, he'll take it. I think the great irony is that, 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 that clearly Donald Trump is pulling these candidates, making making fringe candidates more mainstream by supporting them and providing them with outside funding um, in a way that I think is, is ironic. When you look at the so-called establishment Republicans, you would expect that they might create more distance and might have a, a, a bigger fight, but instead the National Republican Senatorial Committee is sending out mail as late as this week saying, endorse Trump, protect Donald Trump's legacy. Well, this what gets me back to what a midterm election, Yamiche, is normally supposed to be a referendum on the current party, but the, that the Republicans are allowing another president to basically be on the ballot too. So we are having a, if the midterms are a, no longer a referendum, but a proxy fight between well, we know what that is. We're a polarized electorate. It's going to be a coin flip. Yeah, well, I, the question is, will we see the limitations of sort of celebrity and personality politics, right? So when we think about sort of all the people that you mentioned, Herschel Walker and J.D. Vance, um, part of what they're trying to do is recreate what former President Donald Trump did, uh -huh. which is not really have a lot of policies, but have people feel like you hear them, move people in a way You're that is You're describing the Arizona Republican <laughs> gubernatorial primary right now between right. sort of a... Uh, a wannabe celebrity Trumper yeah. versus somebody who sort of worked their way through the system. And with an electorate that's sort of angry at everybody, do they look up and say, you know what, I like this celebrity. He's kind of interesting yeah. to me. Or do they say, you know what, I'm going to go with the guy who's preaching at, Ma at Martin Luther yeah. King's church and I'm going to go there. Right. Well, I think but, the biggest coin toss uh, among the midterms is whether or not young voters and people of color come out. That's the, that's the coin toss. There. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.